Antashe was on the stand saying that the ANC didn't actually have a cadet deployment program. And this struck me as rather strange because since 1997, the ANC has crowed about their cadet deployment program. They have a cadet deployment committee within the ANC, which Cyril was a leader of for a number of years. And now all of a sudden when the, you know, tire hits the road, they say, no, no, we don't have one of those, never. So Gwede was very quick to make sure that you understood the succinct difference between cadet deployment policy and a deployment policy. Because to him, it makes a huge difference. The ANC has a deployment policy, not a cadet deployment policy. Yeah, I'm sorry, Gwede, you talking absolute nonsense here. The ANC certainly has an ANC cadet deployment policy because it was a policy that was undertaken in 1997. I mean, even back in 1985, there were steps for what is called effective cadet deployment. And if you look at the web archive of that specific 1985 consultative conference, in the case of our organization, the long-term task is the overthrow of the apartheid regime and the establishment of a united, non-racial and democratic South Africa as enshrined in the Freedom Charter. Therefore, CADA policy becomes an important component of the political life of the organization. And the main principles of work that the cadres should embrace is recruitment, education and training, deployment, promotion and accountability, and the preservations of cadres recruitment under this topic. So it's not just a deployment policy, it is a full-on cadre deployment policy. And there are literally hundreds of research papers on this very topic. In this particular paper by the Helen Susan Foundation, it says, Adopted in 1997, cadre deployment refers to the appointment of loyal ANC members to all institutions of the state. The objective is to extend and concentrate power within the party. Of course, I'll link all of this below in the sources, but let's see what else Gwede said at the Zondo Commission. Because despite saying that there is no cadre deployment whatsoever, the ANC certainly wants to control all levers of power in a society. And I quote, Unshamedly, the ANC wants to govern, and therefore you can't govern without the state. The state must be ready to execute the programs of government. And this also includes state-owned enterprises, because these are the tools of the governing party to execute. And when questioned by the advocates on whether cadre deployment or the deployment policy, whatever the ANC wants to call it these days, is that at odds with a non-partisan civil service? Where Gwede says, of course there's no tension. The emphasis is on working with a public service that is not rebellious to the governing party. Oh, get off Gwede, stop drinking so much. Of course there's a tension there. If you deploy people to state-owned enterprises and other public institutions, they're going to be loyal to the persons who gave them the job, not loyal to the citizens of South Africa. Of course there's a real tension there. But the fundamental difference between cadre deployment and deployment, according to Gwede Montage, is this narrow interpretation where it seems like the ANC just deploys cadres. That is wrong, he says. They actually deploy competent people. Because, I quote, we are not looking for cadres, we are looking for competence. And he said, the ANC's deployment committee only made recommendations on who should be appointed. It was the government structures that employed people. Right, right. So, um, who appointed Brian Wolefe to ESCOM? Who appointed Sean Abrams to the MPA? Who appointed Tom Moyane to SARS? Are these competent cadres of the ANC? Are these people who have real competence behind them, who have really strengthened the institutions? No, they did not. They hold out those institutions in favor of the ANC. And in return, they got paid handsomely for doing so. And in return for them being deployed, the ANC profited it handsomely. No one went to prison. Everyone got huge deals from ESCOM and the NPA, oh well, no one investigated anything at all. And Tom Moyani had SARS, psst, which ANC cater has gone to court for tax evasion. Come now. These are not cadres apparently, these are deployed for competence. What is really interesting is that if you really believe in a policy that you've been implementing for close to 20 years, and then when questioned about it, you say, oh no, 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 that policy is not real, this is the real policy, it really makes you wonder, the ANC seems to really understand the consequences of carrier deployment. That's why they're trying to, you know, shove it apart and say, no, 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 we deploy on recommendation and we only deploy competent people, not cadres of the ANC. Yeah, bullshit. We all know that's wrong. We all know he is absolutely lying under oath to Zona Commission. Maybe he should be charged with perjury at this stage. Who knows? But I think the people of South Africa and the DA in this particular regard have struck a nerve. The ANC knows KD deployment is responsible for state capture. And they're trying their very best to make sure that the term KD deployment doesn't feature 
Deployment does, but Kader, not in the slightest. We'll see where this goes, but it's weird to me that Kader doesn't say, yeah, Kader deployment's real, let me be using it for 24 years. He didn't say that. Odd, don't you think?